Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today I'm going to show you how to create a flower that was created by a member of our group. Her name is Josephine and she just has so much talent. If you want to join our group, please consider joining us at Just Stitching with a Brother Luminaire. I have a recreation of her design here. It's not absolutely the same. And what I'll do is I'll go back and show you how I created it. And no two flowers are the same in the garden. I do have some questions for Josephine though. And perhaps if she's watching this video, she'll give us some clues about how she did a couple of things. First of all, let's just look very quickly at her flower. And if you own a dream machine or a destiny, you're not going to have some of these stitches. You will not have the center stitch. You won't have the feather stitch or the stem stitch. And the rest of the stitches you'll have. And, with, and I'll offer some suggestions for things that you can do on your machine. It, it will still be a beautiful design. It'll just be different and as all flowers are different in the garden. So we'll talk about some of the stitches that are used. We have one, two, three feather stitches. We have two stem stitches. We have one, two blanket stitches. We have a satin stitch, fill stitches in a couple of places, candle wicking stitches, and a new little stitch here that has like a little ball in the center. All right, let's start on recreating the flower and we'll close this and save it to memory because I, I, I do want to stitch this out to see what it looks like and make some changes to it. If you save everything in my design center, you can do that. You can go back and edit. So we'll delete it and we'll go into my design center. And what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is we'll start with our flower. So go into your shapes, select the flower and choose okay. Let's, first of all, I'm going to open up a grid. And the only reason I'm doing that is I want a quadrant. And I have a nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. I don't know what size this was stitched out by Josephine. Josephine, if you could answer that question, that would be helpful. And I'll reduce this down in size. I am in millimeters only because I think it will help you to try to keep this more or less to the same sizes. Okay, we'll use this for a flower size. Now what I'll do is choose okay, and I want to duplicate that. I chose the wrong thing, excuse me. So here's duplicate. And now let's resize this, and we'll bring this in in size, and place that in the inside. Let me show you what we're doing. This is right here this we have the outside that's where we're going to have the blanket stitch and the inside is going to be our satin stitch so we may want to make that just a little bit larger because they're going to, to more or less touch one another when they stitch out and you can go up to 400 percent if you want or 200 percent use the hand and this will help you as you're using the size jog to move up and down and let's expand it just a little bit more okay we're going to go with that and then let's move back to 100 percent now what we're going to do is there are one two three circles that we need to create so let's go ahead and create those circles. I like to create shapes outside of an area because that way what I can do is I can work with them and select them and I don't have to worry about selecting other parts of my design. Now what we'll do is we'll move that in the center and that's a little small, so we'll make it larger. This is going to be the outermost. And we'll look at that and let's just make it a tad larger. All right, now what we're going to do is duplicate that two more times. I selected the wrong thing, excuse me. I want to duplicate it. I keep selecting shapes, I apologize. All right, let's go back to size and we'll resize that one. 
and this is not going to be uh, significantly smaller. This is the candle wick stitch that's on the inside of that circle. Let's zoom in to 400% and use our hand so we can look at these. And I'll just resize it just slightly smaller. And let's adjust it so that it's centered. And that looks fairly close. I'll choose OK. This time I'll try to duplicate the right way. We'll duplicate one more time. And while it's selected, we'll choose size. And this is going to be the little circle in the inside. And let's just move it up in place. And that looks more or less even. Okay, we'll choose OK. Let's go back out to 100%. Now let's select everything. And let's move this in the center. And when you're doing this, you may want to zoom in again to 400%. Take the hand and look at how you, what your distance is to see if you have it centered. And let's go to 200 just so we can see. It looks fairly centered to me. And if it's not perfect, you can go into size and move it down a little. These, these circles, you might possibly want to make them larger, but I'll leave it at this size just so for the expediency of this video. All right, the next thing that we need to do is we need to draw a stem. So to draw the stem, what I'll do is I'll select this pencil. So I'll go ahead and select the stitch type, and that's a motif stitch that is new. And it's this little um, feather stitch. Now for those of you that have a Dream Machine or a Destiny, I'd suggest you use a chain stitch. I think it's one of the prettiest stitches that we have in my design center. Let's choose a dark green. I'll choose OK. And what I want to do is, let's go to 200%. I want to start outside of the flower and just draw a gentle shape. OK, let's go back to 100%. You don't want it to touch. Now we're going to go add another shape and we'll pick up this teardrop for the leaf. And let's just go ahead and resize that by making it smaller and we want it to be significantly smaller and let's move it over here and let's rotate it and we'll rotate it so we can see if, if this leaf looks good against that stem if it's too large we'll go ahead and make it smaller so let's just kind of move it up next to the, to the stem I think it's too large so I'll choose okay I'll go back to size and I'll make it smaller. Okay, now I'll go ahead and duplicate it by choosing duplicate. Let's move this one over. Let's rotate it as well, and we'll rotate it. And this is going to be our top leaf. And Position it close to, but, but not right next to the stem, and we'll rotate it a little bit more. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to select that other leaf. Let's take the selection. Let's go to 200%, and let's try to draw a box just around that leaf. This is one of the reasons I try to keep things away from my design, because it does make it easier for me. And then let's take that leaf and we'll go to rotate and we'll make that down here against this, the stem as well okay we're going to choose okay and now we're going to go back to 100 percent and apply stitches we will start from the center and work our way out and uh, but we can also go ahead and and do a couple of things since we have the leaf selected let's go ahead and, and take care of it we also need to draw two lines so let me do that first of all the lines are going to be this little um, 
feather stitch. They're going to be on the center of the leaf. Let's go to the pencil. And we want this to be a straight line. So let's go to properties and choose a straight line. We'll choose that dark green, that's fine. Let's draw a line right here. Take that line and select it. Move it into the inside of your leaf and see if you like the length of it. And actually, I think that's pretty good. So what I want to do is to duplicate that. And you can see I've already got the stitch applied to it. So let's duplicate it. Let's take this one over here and let's rotate it. And we'll move this into the inside of that leaf. Okay, now let's start adding other stitches. You do want that line to be stitched after your fill stitch. And we'll see what the machine does. Normally what I do is I apply fill stitches first, but we'll see what the machine does. So first of all, we're going to go to the fill stitch. Let's choose a lighter green so that we can see the colors of our stitches. So we'll choose this, we'll choose okay. We'll take the bucket and we'll apply it to the inside of each leaf. Now on the outside of each one of those leaves, we want that to be a stem stitch. So we'll go to properties and we'll select the stem stitch. And this is the stem stitch number nine. And we'll use the dark green that we have selected. And we'll take the bucket and we'll apply that to the outside of each one of these leaves. Now let's go back and let's start working on the inside out on the flower and on the flower the first thing we're going to do is work with the fill. So we'll go to properties. I'll choose a, a light color brown and choose OK and I have the fill stitch so I'll fill in the center of the flower. I inadvertently did that with the bright paintbrush. Choose undo and choose the bucket and touch it. Now we are going to go ahead and apply the next fill stitch. The next fill stitch will go to the color chip. And this needs to be this light brown again. And we'll apply it to the next circle. If you make a mistake, choose undo. Go up to 200% or 400% and select right here. Okay, the next stitch is uh, going to be the pink. So this is going to be a pink fill. So we'll go in, we'll choose the pink and choose okay. With the bucket selected, we'll apply that inside here and here. Now the next stitch is going to be the little, we're going to work from the inside out for all of our outline stitches. So we'll start by going into our properties and we'll go to our new stitches and we'll select number five and choose okay. We're going to choose a darker brown and we'll just choose this brown shade here and choose okay. We'll take the bucket and apply it to the inside right here. All right, you may not see that, but I heard the audible sound. The next stitch is going to be a candle wick stitch. So we'll go in and select the candle wick, choose okay, take the bucket and apply it to the next line. The next line is going to be the nice little fringe. See the fringe? We're going to create that. So we'll go in, we'll choose a pink color and we'll select the blanket stitch and select OK. We'll take the bucket and we'll apply that to this line and we'll also apply it to the outside. Now we'll go back and we'll select a satin stitch and we'll just go ahead and choose a, a lighter shade of, of pink and choose OK and we'll take that and we'll apply that to the flower here. We now have applied all our stitches. Here's our flower again. So we're 14 minutes in this video, so I feel like I need to hurry up and finish it so that I can go to my lunch date. All right, the first thing, I'm going to leave the, all my fill stitches, uh, uh, 
alone and we'll just leave that at the default. Josephine, please let us know if you changed it. We'll cycle through. This is another fill stitch and we'll cycle again. That's an, the fill on the leaves. And this is our outermost blanket stitch. We want to flip it, but we also want to make it the longest. Actually, I'm making this about seven millimeters. Seven millimeters of what I chose on the link. Josephine may have selected something else. And then I'm going to reduce the overall stitch spacing down to one and a half millimeters and choose OK. And I'll make this one time. We have to wait for a moment. I'll make this one time on thickness. I'll choose OK. And then we'll flip it to the outside. And here we flipped it. Let me now go to the next stitch and we have to wait a moment while this digitizes. All right, on our next stitch, this is our satin stitch. I'll increase this to three and a half millimeters and select okay. And then we'll continue. So just giving you a reference, here's what we're working on. And then we'll go ahead and you can look at it here to see if you want to make it a little bit wider. I think I'll go to four and choose OK. And one of the other things that I might do on that is change the color just so that you can can see the difference in the color. And we'll make this this dark pink and choose OK. All right, the next thing we're going to do is select the next stitch. And this is our, another one of our blanket stitches. You can see it here, that's our fringe. We want to make this the largest length or width, not length, width, and choose okay. And then we're going to reduce the spacing of it and we'll give it a moment. So, We'll change the spacing of it. We need to flip it to the outside and choose OK. And you can, if I zoom in to 200%, you can see it's right here. It's kind of hard to see it 200%. So what I'm going to do is reduce the spacing and I'll take it down to one and a half millimeters. Now she may have had hers at one. I'll just leave it at one and a half and Josephine let us know. I am going to leave it on a repeat of three times. And now you can see those stitches. And the next thing we're going to do is go to the next stitch. This is our candle wicking. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and I'll make it Actually, this looks pretty good. I may leave it at four millimeters. I am going to adjust the spacing a bit. And I'll make this at one and a half millimeters to two millimeters and choose okay. That'll give us a little bit of definition in between those candle wick stitches. Okay, we'll leave it like that. And now we'll go to the next stitch and this is our little stitch that is going to the inside. And what's so cute, let's go into 200%. You can see that right now it's pointing to the inside. Now, one of the things that you could do is you could make this longer. Let's adjust it to make it a little bit longer. This will force it more towards the inside. And we'll leave it at 14 and a half and choose OK. And we'll wait a moment. And let's just adjust the spacing a little bit and move the spacing out to one and a half millimeters. Hers fit together in the center. I'm just doing that to give the stitches a little bit of room and 
we'll see how it looks. We can always adjust it if we don't like it. Okay, I like that. And if I wanted to, I could take this in even a little bit further. So let's go back and we'll take this up to 16 and a half millimeters. And that'll form a tight circle in the inside. All right. This is also increasing the size of these balls though. And I'm looking at that and I really don't want that. So I thought it what it was doing, it, it looks like that this is both height and width. What I'm going to do is reduce this back down. And we'll make it 10 millimeters, which is the default and choose okay. And let's just look at it and, and compare it to her design. Now you can see what that did and I'm not real, I'm not fond of that. So we'll go back and increase it. And I'll settle on 15 millimeters. Her circle may have been a tighter circle in the inside. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we'll leave it like that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we have our feather stitches and I want to link these together because I'm making them all seven and a half millimeters and we'll go to that and we'll change it to seven and a half millimeters and choose okay. You can also adjust the spacing on it. These are inside the leaves and, and also on the stem. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and select the stem stitches. So let's find those. Let's link them together and let's make them smaller as well. And let's just try six millimeters and see what it looks like. And I do want my stem stitches to be on the outside. That's still big. Let's make it smaller. Five millimeters is the smallest and we'll go with that. Okay, we're 22 minutes into this video and honestly, I could have probably created this after seeing somebody else create it in about five minutes. So talking takes a lot of time and, uh, and, and it takes a lot of time for you to listen to it as well. But once you become familiar with my design center, it's real easy to play around in it. But the, the real beauty is to take something like this and I do want to save it to memory on my machine. The real beauty is to take this and stitch it out. So here's Josephine's design. Now on these stitches right here, what she did is she cut the bobbin thread on the back because they're sewn in the circle that creates that fringe. So now if you digitize, you know a way of creating a, a fringe stitch if you didn't know one before. And I think our design came out pretty well compared to hers. The proof will be in stitching it out and they're somewhat different, but they're both pretty. You will notice though, let's go to the stitch play out and let's play this out and let's see how it's going to play out because one of the things that you may need to do, and we'll speed it up some, is you may need to stitch out in a different order. Um, We'll ask Josephine if she had to do this. It's laying down the fill stitches first, which is good. That's what I would expect. And then it looks like the right now everything looks pretty good. And I would say that this is sewing out in a good sewing order. The only thing I really noticed different about mine and Josephine's, besides maybe the size, is it looks like your stem stitches are going in the opposite direction and I wasn't able to achieve that so I'm just cr trying to figure out how you were able to re to achieve it D did you do that by rotating after the, after the um, 
you created it and that did it. I'm not quite sure. So I'll have to play around on that. Josephine, as always, thanks for your help. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe and share them. Uh, if you subscribe, you'll see every new video that I post. And trust me, I post quite a few. And then also consider joining us in the Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. I will recreate this on the Dream Machine, but it will not be this morning. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. I appreciate your time.